so you, you mentioned um, some of the learning resources, like how you learned Web3, you just uh, read the past order reports and the postmortems. Um, was that pretty much all you did, just with taking your background um, already um, in exploit development, uh, just reading order reports and postmortems, that's pretty much all you needed to do to get up to speed very quickly. Is that pretty accurate? Well, at first I tried to get good fundamentals of blockchain technology. So I even started by having a good understanding of Bitcoin. So there was this website, uh, Learn Me a Bitcoin, which uh, teaches you Bitcoin from scratch, like all different uh, uh, components involved. So I started with that, then wanted to understand uh, Ethereum as it's like most, uh, most of uh, blockchain technology is built on EVM. So uh, I went over the white paper and the yellow paper, uh, tried to understand it to a very deep level. Uh, this is the kind, the kind of thing I also do like uh, in previous, uh, uh, in my previous jobs, right? Like trying to understand some technology pretty well before uh, trying to break it. So um, also reading the Solidity docs from front to back, uh, reading it all. And also they have some cool uh, security considerations which are embedded inside the uh, actual documentation which, is, which can give you some certain directions of like where are potential soft spots. Um, I also had like a remix running in the background and anytime like you don't understand how something works, you can code it up and like uh, see it for yourself. I think it's important for everyone to have like some kind of setup where they can validate their ideas pretty quickly. Um, other than that, you know, like there's a lot of uh, uh, financial knowledge that I didn't necessarily have to begin with. So you, you just read the relevant resources, right? Like Finematics videos or uh, an, uh, an Investopedia articles or anything that uh, you feel like uh, covers the concepts pretty well. And also, one more thing I, I did was like uh, try to choose the, the biggest uh, Web3 names, like uh, the, all the technologies that are at the, uh, at the core of Web3 and reading the docs about of each of them to feel confident that you like, I kind of know what the overall, uh, um, uh, basically what, what they're solving and how they're solving their, ish their, like, uh, their problems. So, uh, the biggest lending platform, the biggest uh, uh, like chain link uh, maker. So I, I kind of uh, read all the docs from their websites and that kind of gives you the confidence that you know what's up and once you get the, this uh, stuff uh, wrapped around your head, like uh, you can understand the, the more uh, modern and fresh stuff that's coming out. Yeah, nice, nice. So it sounds like you pretty much used the normal quote unquote learning resources that everyone um, uses and there's really no magic bullet to it. It's just, uh, you know, t uh, going through the steps and then um, with like your background and then actually absorbing the new concepts uh, around like financial and blockchain. And it really sounded like you started from the beginning, like learning what is Bitcoin, what is Ethereum. Um, and did you find um, the financial aspects of this particularly or more difficult to grasp than some of the technological aspects? Because uh, I, I've spoken to some like devs and they, they told me the financial aspects were, were sort of troubling them. Yeah, um, the, there are some financial concepts which are even like kind of new inside Web3. Like they basically like some of them don't exist much in Web2, like uh, some perpetual implementations and uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, and difficult to really understand them. And yeah, sometimes you spend more time uh, getting like understanding financial concepts uh, than the technology. Like I did an audit last week on like uh, uh, hedging strategies, and uh, at the beginning I had very little idea of like how they're like doing a delta neutral strategy. And yeah, I spend more time understanding hedging than uh, their specific code base. But you know, it's important to to know what you're studying because like on a logical level, this is like a, the building block, which is, which they're building a platform on. And if the, like sometimes you can find uh, bugs in the financial level, like uh, logically they're not doing something that is protecting like uh, what the, the core idea is behind the, like the financial core idea. So it's always worth understanding like the 
the um, the the fundamentals, the like the financial concepts behind it. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Like I, I remember when I first started uh, looking into like Code Arena and some of these code bases. Um, it was a lot of financial aspects, and I, when I couldn't understand that aspect, it didn't really make sense. Like what I was looking at. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, that plays a part in sort of li like understanding the system as a whole um, to uh, to give you more ideas uh, to work with during your audit. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's usually worthwhile understanding it, and <clears throat> you can if you're here to like uh, be interested in like long term rather than like uh, there's a lot of people which are like just trying out a, a, a weak competition and see if they even like it, uh, and then they decide if they want to join the field or not, but. If you do want to join, I think it's worthwhile to like do it methodically and spend your time uh, getting uh, a great uh, a greater depth of knowledge, and then like uh, trying to solve the specific uh, contest or bug bounty, and this knowledge will translate later on to other projects. Uh, so, I think it's definitely worthwhile uh, to to spend that time, even at the expense of like immediate progress. <clears throat> 